In your Planet Scale dashboard, we expose quite a bit of information to help you figure out what is going on with your cluster and with your queries in your cluster. You can look at metrics for individual nodes like CPU usage, memory usage, and you can go to insights to get really detailed metrics about the queries executing, query latency, and these kind of things. But sometimes you want a little bit more ability to drill into those metrics or you want to be able to look at those metrics in places other than planet scale. Maybe your organization uses tools like Datadog, or maybe you have other places where you use Grafana dashboards, and you want to be able to also look at and monitor planet scale from those locations. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can work with metrics in your planet scale database. So in the planet scale app, you can look at metrics in a couple different ways. One way to do this is simply by from the dashboard, you can click on say your primary and you can go in and see a bunch of metrics uh, set different time ranges. And then you can see metrics about reads and writes, queries, IOPS, your uh, CPU and memory usage, storage uh, from the past hour, things like that, right? So you can also look at this for replicas if you wanna drill in on what's going on in a replica. You can also look at information uh, and metrics coming from VT gates, like how many connections right now I'm just throwing really simple load over one connection at this database and we can get some information from those. And of course, if you've used planet scale, you know that you can come in and look at something like insights and you can use this to drill into what your query latency is, uh, how many queries per second are running at different times. As you can see right now, this is just a test database. So lots of inconsistency, but this is really useful for drilling into potential performance issues or helping you figure out if you need to size things up uh, or being able to come down and drill into the performance of individual queries and figure out like what indexes you need to add and these kind of things. Now, what you may want to do, like I mentioned before, is be able to export some of these metrics to other places. And one of the things that we allow you to do is export metrics uh, to Prometheus. And we have some docs if you go to our documentation and you click on monitoring your database and you go down to Prometheus. We have several sort of guides and walkthroughs here for how you can do this. So when you're wanting to set this up, one of the first things that you're gonna to need to do is first of all, make sure you have Prometheus installed. In this case, we're just gonna use it on a local machine, but you could also use a hosted solution for this. Uh, and then we're gonna to need to make sure we get a service token with a particular permission. Uh, you need a service token with the read metrics endpoint permission. And this is what we'll have to configure Prometheus with. So in my database, I actually already have this set up, but you would need to go to your organization. You would need to go to settings and then you would need to go down to service tokens. So this is the one I already have set up for that. But if you're creating a new one, you would hit new service token, give it a name. So test for uh, Prometheus, create it. You would want to copy and save these things down. And then in the settings, what you're gonna to wanna to make sure and enable is the read metrics endpoint permission. So you'll save that. And then you're gonna need that uh, token ID and code later when we go to set up your Prometheus. So make sure those are saved somewhere from when you created it. Now that you have that created and saved, the next step is to start configuring Prometheus. So we need to put a couple of options into the configuration file. And then as long as it's installed, it's pretty easy to get it started and up and running. So we give you an outline of what you need here. Um, kind of the key things that you need to fill in are what's your organization's name or what do you want this to be called? And then you need to put your token ID and your token there. And then also put your org name in here for the API call for doing the metrics scraping. So let's go over, I actually already have a directory here. I'm going to go to my prom directory and open up this prometheus.yaml. And I already have this configured here with this organization. I've put the organization name there and I've put my key here. And then this, as long as that's set up right, will allow me to properly connect to this database. Okay. So with that set up, and since I'm just doing this on localhost, all I have to do really is start this up and then we should be able to uh, check and make sure it's working correctly just locally in my browser here. So I start this, we got a couple of just info log messages, nothing concerning. And so now we should be able to go look at uh, localhost 9090 and I'm gonna refresh this here. And now we have Prometheus running. 
And what it recommends you do over here <clears throat> is go to your service discovery and make sure that uh, basically there is something that comes up for each one of the branches in your organization. So if I go over, instead of to the query page, over to here, we can see this uh, organization has quite a few branches in it. And so I've got an entry for each one of those. So we're looking good. Seems like we are getting stuff and uh, seem, seems like it is working and connecting correctly. So what we are gonna wanna do, and you can confirm specifically if you have certain branches in mind that you want to do this for. So I'm gonna say like, uh, I'll list out my uh, or the the branch ID and all the information I need for that wholesale database. And this is the branch ID for it right there. So that will come in handy later when I'm looking at my Grafana dashboards and I want to look at a particular branch ID. That's the one I'll be wanting to look at for this test case. So if you want to set up a Grafana dashboard, you can follow along also in the docs, the visualizing in Grafana tutorial. And Again, I'm just gonna run this locally because it's nice and simple for testing out. You can also host this somewhere, of course. It's probably what you'd wanna do in reality. Uh, I've already got it installed on my machine. So if you're on a Mac, you can do a brew install, whatever is most convenient. And then right now the service is not running, but I'll go ahead and just start Grafana here. Paste that there. In a second or two, we should see that it has started up and it should be viewable at localhost 3000. I have that URL already here, so we'll refresh. So I'm already logged into Grafana, but if this is your first time doing it, you may need to uh, put in your username and password and then create a custom password and then get to this page right here. Uh, but what we wanna do is actually set up a dashboard for viewing and, and looking at what's going on in our database. So you're gonna need to add the Prometheus endpoint to Grafana. I have already gone through these steps and added it in here, but if you just follow through these, you should be able to have it pull from your locally running Prometheus. But I can go in here and if I go down to the data sources, you can already see that I have planet scale pulling uh, from that local host 9090. So we're already set to go there. So just make sure you go through, configure this correctly. You're gonna wanna set the scrape interval to one minute and then you can start building out a dashboard. The next step is to get the dashboard up and running. The way that you would do this if you wanna use our default dashboard is you'd go to this URL here, and I've already got that opened up, and you can either download or just copy this file, and then we'll use that when we go create our new dashboard in Grafana. So I've got it copied, so I'll go to dashboards, I'll say new, uh, import, and then paste in that JSON and hit load. So I'll leave it as branch overview, leave the ID, and just make sure you select the proper planet scale Prometheus data source and then click import. So we can see here, we've got our dashboard pulled up. Now in this organization that I'm using, there's a bunch of different branches. And so this default one is not that wholesale one we were looking at earlier. That one has this branch ID right here. And so now we open this up and we can see some different stats. And this one, for example, says no data, but that's just because there are no errors yet. This is uh, a database that, at least for this time range, doesn't have any errors to show. Uh, but we can see total incoming queries, CPU usage of the primary memory usage. And as you scroll through, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff to be viewed here, right? You can get some nice detailed information about what's going on with your primaries, uh, what's going on with your replicas, what's going on with your VT gate. Uh, let's see, let's go down and look at some highlights of key space. You can e even see some InnoDB stats down here. Uh, so quite a bit that you can drill into and look at. It's very useful to have in Grafana, especially if you're already using something like this for other parts of monitoring your infrastructure. Another thing you can do with this is integrate into Datadog. So we have a default planet scale Datadog integration, but if you want to actually do things with a custom uh, Datadog agent, you can follow through these instructions here on our documentation. So I've already gone through the process of creating an agent running locally here on my Mac and then connecting to Datadog and all of this. But you'll wanna make sure and get that set up and your agent set up in whatever environment that you have. So scrolling down here, let's go to cover a couple of the interesting parts here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure and uh, depending on what platform that you're on, specify the planetscale.py file. And this is something that you can just get from our GitHub repository. Planetscale.py is right here. And so you're gonna to wanna to put that in your checks.d directory uh, in your Datadog configuration agent area. And then you're also gonna to wanna to set up your 
in your configuration, your planet scale YAML file specifying some of the database and connection information. So you're gonna create a file, planetscale.yaml, and you're gonna give information like your organization, the token ID and the token from earlier, the one that you created with that same permission, you can just reuse the same one. Uh, and then you would also specify in here whatever metrics it is that you want to collect. So here in this example, and this is the same one that I have running right now, we're only collecting this one metric uh, for VT gate query duration. So over in Datadog to look at this, I'm gonna go down to metrics and explorer. And over here, uh, the planet scale ones would be prefixed with planet scale. Right now we can just see that one metric that I was exporting and we have that here to look at. And of course, if you wanted lots more metrics, you could choose different things and put those in your configuration when you're setting up and configuring the agent. I'll go back and show you too, uh, there is a full list of metrics that we have here in our doc, right? So this is a useful reference point so that you can see if you are setting up your own custom dashboards and figuring out what you want to export to Datadog, you can sort of go through and pick either all of these or which specific metrics that you want to be able to export. All right, so there is a nice overview of how you can work with metrics both in PlanetScale and exported metrics to monitor what's going on in your PlanetScale database. I hope you found this useful. If you have questions, reach out to us. Our support is great. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.